I'll basically give you an introductory commentary on the lake house creation within Power BI. Now, before we understand lake house within Power BI, I just want to give you a bit of theoretical knowledge on what a lake house is all about. Now, before we understand lake house, it is important to understand what data lake is. So basically data lake is a centralized storage repository to store, process and secure large amounts of data. It is basically used for accessing the data in a unified manner. Data Lake stores information in a structured and an unstructured way as well. So Data Lake is an open format. It avoids locking to a proprietary data warehouse by various data management systems providers like Microsoft or Oracle. Uh, data Lake is basically used for unified data access. So what does that mean is like data is uh, stored in multiple format, multiple patterns, and then you access it in a one single place. Data Lake has an ability to scale. It has it is basically highly durable, low cost in nature. Uh, it can process vast amount of data from various and multiple data stores uh, in a data. It stores data in a native format and it processes uh, any variations to it. Data Lake basically uses a flat architecture. Uh, and object storage to store data. Uh, data Lake provides a complete and an authoritative data store. So you can see that as a single source of truth that can power machine learning, data analytics, and business intelligence within your organization. However, the downside to it is that as you add more data uh, within your data lake, data lake is prone to a data swamp problem. So there's a lack of, lack of organizing and cataloging the data. So the challenges which we face with data lake is like there's no support for transactions, no enforcements of data quality or governance, poor performance optimization, and it's prone to becoming data swamp. So the answer to uh, the basically the data lake is basically use a lake house. Now lake house is an answer to challenges of the data lakes. It adds a transaction storage layer on top of it. Data lake is basically used to build a lake. The Delta lake is uh, used to build a lake house. Now Delta lake, Delta lake is basically an open format. Uh, uh, it, it basically adds a data management and governance layer on top of uh the existing lake house and that combines best of data lakes and data warehouse so uh, it gives you the power of both the data warehouse and data lakes and at the same time it addresses the problem of data swamping uh, and various other shortcomings which we have seen in uh the data lake the delta lake eliminates data silos delta lake is basically cost efficient highly scalable lake house that provides self-serving analytics to the end users now that's all about theory now if you navigate to app.powerpi.com and if you have a fabric um, subscription uh, so if you want to check what subscription you have you can click on your uh, icon over here name on the top right uh, and then you can see now i have a fabric license i have it in trial mode so i can basically provision a fabric workspace now what i've done is like i've already provisioned a fabric workspace ahead of time so anything which you see in this diamond icon is a fabric content so as you see over here pp workspace is a fabric workspace similarly i have fabric workspace uh, another fabric workspace but this time i'm going to make use of pp workspace now here when i navigate to pv workspace i can see a whole bunch of things which i've already created but just to start with how to create a lake house i'll just click on new item and then here i can see various items i can create dashboards paginated report reports data flow gen one etc etc but i'm interested in creating a lake house so lake house is basically used to store big data for cleaning querying reporting and sharing so when you click on it, it'll ask you the name of the lake house. I'll just call it as say November Lake House. So if this is the November month, I'll just type in November Lake House. Now, as you see over here, as I type in space, it is not liking it. So that means you need to uh, have no space within your lake house name. Now you have an option to select lake house schema. Now what it is, it is in public preview and basically schema lets you manage and reference the objects in your lake house more efficiently uh, you can use a default schema to automatically fill in uh, the file paths when referencing a data object in code now again this is optional uh, i can select i will not select uh, depending on my requirement i'll just click on create and a november lake house will get uh, created within the backend 
now let it create uh, the once it is created it will start loading this lake house within your interface and then you will see a nice uh, interface whereby you can uh, do various things you can upload files you can start with the sample data you can create new data flow gen 2 you can create new data pipeline but this is how the interface will look like so you have a lake house explorer over here here you have that schema dbo you have this tables and you have this files now currently this is very blank you do not have anything in it so let's upload something within your lake house and then you will be able to utilize that lake house uh, in various other uh, applications now in order to do that let me show you uh, what i'm going to do so i have the sample uh, csv file so this is a csv file uh, which has some information like order id order date ship date customer uh, manufacturer uh, product name segment so all these things are there now remember now that as you see over here in this column name there is no space okay so uh, earlier there was space so i've changed that to uh, order underscore id instead of order space id similarly order date ship date so make sure that your column header does not have any space in it okay and once you have this record we can ingest this information in the back end uh, data lake so uh, as you see over here this is a csv file and it has i think more than like say 9000 records like 9994 records okay so i'm gonna import that so i'll just click on get data and then from here i'll just say upload files so i'll upload the file i will just navigate to the path i'll just go to dev and sample database and this is a data set dot csv and we can say override if file already exists i'll click on upload and then as you see over here this file name this dot csv is getting uploaded this is the name of the lake house which we have just said and it is less than one mb once that is done as you see over here this is the csv file which you have uploaded and this is now there in data lake house now we do not have a table currently it is just a flat file that's what i when i started giving you an introduction about lake house i said that it holds structured and unstructured data but then if you want to make it as a structured data then there is an option as you see over here under tables we do not have any record over here so let's create that table from the csv file so if you click on this three dot here you have an option to load two tables either you can load to a new table or an existing table so if you are uh, uploading this for the first time make use of new table if you are using it for the repeat activity and if you got some uh, delta information coming in from that csv you have an another csv coming from that store record you can use an existing table but in my case i will just click on new table we can select the schema currently there's one schema dbo and we can name the new table name now let's call this as say brisbane store and this is the name of the table we can use header for the column names yes because our schema uh, the csv file contains a header as a first row uh, and then we can uh, use a separator of comma because as the csv file as you see over here this is a csv file uh, and it is just open in excel but technically it's a csv file and the first row contains a column so all good i'll just click on load once it is done, uh, you will see that we have loading superstore data set dot csv to table Brisbane underscore store and it is stored in November Lake House. So it might take some time depending on your record set. Now, as I have uh, uh, less than 10,000 records, so it should be pretty quick. Uh, but uh, if you have more than a million record, then it might take some time for it to be reflected. Now, once it is reflected, um, you should be able to see under tables the uh, information now in this notification as you see over here it is saying that successfully created brisbane store table now once this is done you will see under the left menu brisbane underscore store this is the table which you have created and now this is in a tabular format now what we can do we can do various things out of it first it will show you the preview and then we can query this particular table uh, which is in the lake house. So what we have done, we have successfully taken the CSV file. Uh, we started formatting that CSV file, but in my case, the CSV style was already formatted. I told you like there are some uh, things which you need to take care of. Make sure that there is no space within the header. Make sure that the first 
row is the header and then you accordingly specify during the ingestion process that this is the rule set this is the comma separator uh, comma is a comma separator uh, character for me to uh, get this data ingested within the lake house and once this is that you see this information there are various things which you can do we can delete this table we can rename this table you can view the files now this is important now if you click on this view files you can see there are a couple of files over here there is a type of folder and type as parquet now this stores the information in a parquet format okay so it's a again it's a format which uh, allows efficient storing of information there is a folder called as delta underscore log so sometimes this file is also called as a delta parquet format because of this so it will store the information in the form of a json and it will have uh, a commit folder to store all the previous commits which has been happening now in this case it is just like uh, a simple data upload but then if you have this continuous stream of information coming from your backend system then it will store the delta information and it won't store all the information um, of the particular table uh, because uh, it wants to show this information in a more efficient way other things what we can do we can go into the properties and we can view the url you can see the relative path and we can see the abfs path for this particular table which has been loaded in the lake house uh, now if uh, uh, if the data is getting ingested within your system and if you want to see the uh, uh, information in a live manner you can click on refresh and then it will start refreshing the data source and checking whether there are any changes happening within the backend system or not so this is how you basically explore uh, the data warehouse uh, the lake house now say if i'm in say power pages or uh, say if, if i'm in a specific workspace okay so this is a fabric content workspace now you can see this information in a uh, linear way in a lineage way now we have created this number lake house that says oh there is a lake house and then there is a lake house a sql analytics endpoint and then there is a semantic model so these are the three different things which uh, are basically split it out uh, in different sections now this is the actual lake house where, where the actual data is stored but then you don't directly query the lake house you query something called as a sql analytics endpoint and then these are the options which you can perform i'm not going to go through this uh, but i'm just showing you these are the options which are available uh, and then this is a semantic model these are like basically uh, a semantic model for the lake house which we have created we can further analyze in excel we can create a report out of it uh, and we can create a paginated report now this is an important point this is a sql analytics endpoint now how do we create a sql analytics endpoint is like if we go into the lake house so if i navigate to this lake house if i click on open lake house then on the top right you see lake house so this is a lake house interface but if you click over here there is a sql analytics endpoint so if you click on it sql analytics endpoint it says sql analytics endpoint for sql querying and SQL Analytics Endpoint is a default Power BI semantic model to automatically add object to SQL Analytics Endpoint settings. Uh, use manual default semantic model. So from here, you can query your data, start a query, you can open a table or view or preview, and then we can uh, write a SQL query or a visual query. Now from here, uh, I'm in a different interface now. I've gone here, Brisbane Store, and now I can see all the tables over here. This is more a familiar playground as you see over here, views, functions, stores, procedures. Now this has given you that uh, SQL based interface, right? So if I click on new SQL query, I can go ahead and write uh, my SQL query. So select star from, and then you give the table name. So I just type in select star from Brisbane underscore store. Now this is a uh, SQL interface and then you can write the SQL query and then it will start executing it. Now, this is similar to that same interface when we had the SQL Server Management Studio, uh, which many people are familiar with it. And then you can see the displayed information in um, in a table format. You can open and explore. You can further explore this data, but I'm not going to cover this. But there is a way through which you can then use the SQL knowledge uh, available with you uh, to query and do some more analysis. So that's it, folks. This is all about uh, Lakehouse. Uh, within Power BI service. Thanks for watching.